Hello, today I'm going to be doing a bit of a shop tour because I've been asked to do one. So here you go, you can learn a little bit more about the workshop. It's not very big, probably won't take very long. I'll just talk about some of the equipment that we've got. Starting down here, obviously, water trough, very useful. Put a bag of coke there. This is my clinker, clinker bucket, which is really useful to have it right next to the forge. So as I'm digging hot clinker out, I can just easily get it down out of the forge and into there. On this wall I've got a couple of things, fire blanket, that's obviously very useful. This pair of bolt cutters, they save me so much time. When I'm cutting up steel, these will cut up from you know 4mm round bar to 12mm round bar and it takes what two seconds whereas with the angle grinder I'm going through discs and burning money and time so really good, really useful. Here's the forge, it's a side blast forge, so the air's coming in at the side rather than a bottom blast where it's coming up from the bottom. Also, it, unlike a gas forge, this doesn't have any, any wool, any insulative wool or any fire bricks, it, it just relies off this, this coal slack, which is effectively just the dust that is left over after you've burnt coal. So it's not the clinker, it's all the, the dust and the sand that gets, gets left over. And that does its job at insulating this outside steel from burning and melting away. Also, in the forge, I tend to burn a mixture of coke and coal. So coke is this smaller stuff, which is burnt coal, so it's a pure, uh, pure carbon. And then th this is the coal, which is much bigger and impure. However, I find that the coke here, like in a realistic situation or in a in an ideal situation, you want to be burning just coke. However, I find that it's just not a, not a good quality and it, it tends to st just stick together. The clinker just forms horribly. So and for whatever reason, putting the coal in there seems to make it clinker up much better and it, the clinker falls down to the bottom of the forge and it's just, just beautiful. Anyway, coming to the back of the forge, on the side here there's this water trough. And so this is a water-cooled forge. The fan's there, this is just a bouncy castle blower, blows in through that pipe, which goes straight into the side of the forge, through this pipe here. And the water acts as a barrier so that the, the fan doesn't get too hot. That's all that it's there for. And so that the pipe doesn't melt, I suppose. This anvil here is the first anvil that I bought, and it's a smaller one than the one that I tend to use most days. It's about 60 kilos, I think. I don't really know what that is in pounds, but a few. This is the one that I tend to take on shows, as it is a bit smaller and a bit more manoeuvrable. I have it so close to the forge so that when I'm doing forge welds, I can just bring it out, get the weld set, so it's, you've got a less of a distance to travel. Also, it's not bolted down, so I can move it out, which, is, again, is really useful. Moving things about the workshop is always good. Here, big tool rack, which is probably a little bit too big, it could be a little bit smaller. Lots of hammers down here. This is probably my favourite one, which is a three pound ball peen. I also like this little one as well, two and a half pound. I tend to use lighter hammers, so I'll do more blows per minute rather than a big hammer where you're doing shorter blows, but also I tend not to do heavy forging I tend to do more lighter stuff and then bending, which when you're using a heavy hammer like a three and a half or a four pound hammer, that can really hurt your shoulder when you're bending as you're not, you don't have the rebound off the anvil. Here, lots of pairs of tongs. Most of these I've made. That one I bought, that one I bought, and that is bought. The rest are all made. So yeah, tongs, useful, obviously. Don't burn your hands. Uh, back here, lots of hardy hole tools, bending forks. Hot cuts, leaf making tools here, these two, oak leaves, twisting wrench, hold down, uh, loads of stuff over here, and then animal head making tools, I keep all of those together, and then lots of other various drifts and chisels and things. Measure, wire brushes, these are really use useful, need to get a new one really there, but super useful at getting rid of scale, bit of flux, I don't really tend to use flux, but it's there if I need it. So this little box here is actually broken at the moment, 
but this is my variable resistor. So from here, I can switch the fan on or off and then change the amount of current, I presume, going to the fan so I can change the revs of the motor. Um, so I can either have more air going into the forge, so a hotter forge or less, so a cold forge. But it's broken at the moment, so I'm resorting to moving the fan out of the way of the air intake, which isn't the best thing. Anyway, this is a little leg vise. It's about four inches width at the top. It's a little bit low for me. I like them a little bit higher, as I tend to be doing the animal heads on here. And so I prefer those to be a little bit higher, so I'm a little bit more stable rather than a big heavy forging on there. Twisting wrench, or tap wrench almost, but I use it as a twisting wrench. Bending forks, really useful, again, just to get into, into small places. Barriers rasp, I don't really use that too much, but it's there if I need it. A couple of sledgehammers, that's a 14 pound one. This is a 28 pound one, which is way too big for sledgehammers, but I have one. Down the bottom of the vise, there's also a swage block, which obviously is down there, so I can't use at the moment, but it weighs the vise down, so the vise doesn't really move much. Also, the vise isn't bolted down, so I can move it out, which again is really useful. And the swage block just gives it an extra security, so it's not gonna bounce all over the place. Along here, I have discarded animal heads which weren't good enough to make the cut. All sorts of rams and oh, there goes one, little dragons and things which weren't good enough so they ended up on that shelf. Fan, really useful, hot days, keep you cold. Hacksaw, bin and then we come over here to the bench. So this bench was one of the first things that I made for the workshop when there was nothing else in here, it was just this. And I made it with this little stick welder down here, which I'm very pleased with. It was about 90 quid or something off the internet, and it's really useful. It goes up, can pull 160 amp, really good, very happy with that. So, in the workshop, I tend to use two angle grinders. So I have one which has a cutting disc in, and then another which has a grinding disc. Plug both of them in. And it just saves you so much time when you don't have to keep changing the discs out. Discs are on there, welding rods, welding mask, all of that stuff. If we look up on the top beam of the, the roof there, you can see I've got a little fan. It's, the, the, um, it's a sort of an extractor fan, or rather it will pull air in and push it out the doorway. I really need to get like an air conditioning unit or... It's not quite the right word, air extraction unit to really clean the air in here. Is it? It's not, it's not very well ventilated, this building, but it works for me. Anyway, got a pillar drill here, which really I do need to bolt this down. Works well enough. The spring's broken, so it doesn't pull up, which is a, annoying. I need to fix that at some point. Also, I need to put a bit of a longer cable on it. Down here is a proper MIG welder. So this is a three-phase synergic MIG welder. However, I don't use it. This isn't mine. This is uh, Bill Carter's who has taught me a lot in blacksmithing over the years and he needed a place to put it. So it's here and it's been here for about a year, but he's taking it out soon. I couldn't use it even if I wanted to. There's no gas and no reel. So that's sort of all of that section. Down here, there's lots and lots of bits and bobs of Stuff, horseshoes, and we call these dangling fairies. A couple of snubbling scrolls down there, and all sorts of other scrolls, and that's all for a big, big set of gates for an estate, which I need to finish those at some point. Well, we're, we're making those over the course of quite a long time, but there they are. This is also that's my quenching bucket, quenching trough, which has a load of oil in, which is you know, heat treatment, which I pull out if I ever need to heat treat, heat treat anything. It, you know, you don't want to be heat treating stuff under a bench, really. Anyway, this is the big shelf. This was the second thing that I made in the workshop. The bench was first and then I needed somewhere to store everything. So there is an enormous amount of stuff on here. Loads and loads of tools, drill bits, finishing equipment and 
all sorts of stuff, electrical stuff, anything that you could really think of, and then steel rack on top of all of that with all of the all the stuff that I need, lots and lots of different size stock. I need to do another steel order at some point actually. And then here, lots and lots of bags of coal. Coal and coke, I suppose. I've, I've said I've used used a half and half in the forge. Anyway, that is pretty much it, I would say. So, thank you for watching the video. I hope that you've learnt a little bit more about the workshop with me ranting at you for eight minutes or however long this has been, I've no idea. I realised I forgot to talk about this anvil. This is the big anvil that I have. I reckon it's about 100 kilos maybe, maybe 80 kilos, I don't know. It's got this big cast iron stand on the bottom which is probably heavier than the anvil itself. And then underneath that is a, a willow block. And this doesn't move anywhere really, even though it's not bolted down. When I'm forging on it, it's, it, it's fine. So that's the big anvil. Anyway, thank you for watching the video. I'll see you soon.